Hi and welcome to what I hope will be the first summation video. We will try to kind of put a closure to class one. A few thoughts, you have expressed a lot of thoughts in the forum and if anybody has not yet gone and read through the entries at the forum, it is very, very worthwhile, a lot of wonderful ideas. I am not going to recap all of those ideas now. Uh, these are only a few thoughts to kind of bring everything together and move us on to the next class. We have been talking and communicating about what happened here with Lot's daughters. And all of you picked up immediately that there's no way to disconnect the story of Lot's daughters with the disaster that they had just been through. The destruction of Sodom and Amora, of their hometowns. Um, if you wish, the loss of their mother. Right? She turns into a pillar of salt. Uh, we didn't even discuss that. There have been some comments, very, very interesting comments on the forum about that. What do we do with this story? Um, so here are a few thoughts that maybe you can contemplate, take them with you. There were mentions about the flood. It is very, very difficult to separate this kind of a cosmic disaster from the story of the flood, the first one that we have, that will then echo through the Tanakh. Um, and I don't think there's any disaster that we can look at and not somehow wonder how it's connected to the flood. And in case we did not want to do that, the Tanakh forces us to, us to do that. I came up with five roots, right? In Hebrew, the words work by roots. So five types of words that come from the story of the flood, and they're also found in the description of the destruction of Sodom and Amorah, uh, which I find is quite fascinating. So if you're just listening to the text, which many people probably were, you cannot help but hear echoes in the sounds, in the words, in the language, echoes from the story of the flood. And there too, somebody is saved at the last moment, pulled out. What do they come back to? Come back to a world with nothing, with nobody. And what is the first thing that they create in that world? What is the first real productive thing that they do? Noach plants a vineyard. He produces wine a symbol of civilization. But while that wine is a wonderful thing, it is also what leads to sexual relations that are forbidden by society. Those sexual relations back in the story of Noah are not productive. The sexual relations in our story are productive, but society cannot accept them. They break up the family hierarchy. There has to be order in the world. That's how the world is supposed to be. That's what creation was about. Order, organization. The wine here is used, what well, we would say negative, but amazingly, the story is not judgmental. We're given it as facts. Uh, I would say that that lack of judgment is probably what pushed the rabbis to be very uh, supportive, more than supportive, positive about the daughters of Lot. So much so that they even see it as a positive thing that King David and from him the future Mashiach, the Messiah, come from these daughters of Lot. That's not to say that they thought that this is a wonderful idea. Many stories in Tanakh might be outstanding stories. Don't try them at home. But they recognize these daughters as being fantastic, young, idealistic, altruistic women uh, who in their own way are trying to push things forward. No, they did not think that the Messiah was going to come from them. They did not know that. Um, but as the world turns, that's what happens. It's as if they got a reward for what they did um, without, of course, knowing that that reward was possible. Uh, on the flip side of that, King David does have to keep in mind that in the background of his family, he has quite an interesting history. Uh, and if he gets, if any king becomes too full of himself, as they say, then you um, can always point back and show him where he started out from. But this very positive approach that we have to these daughters, I think should suggest to us that what we have here is a story that is completely unacceptable, but absolutely necessary as far as they were concerned. Again, not something that we should copy, but something that we should struggle with, that we should understand, that we should have compassion for um, and admire without taking it as an example of what should be done. Let's move on to the next class.